All right, we're live with Empowering Radio, brought to you by MyEmpoweredWorld.com. My name is Evan Dorian, and I'm your host for tonight. We've got a great guest speaker tonight. His name is John Watkins, who is a professional photographer located here in Orange County. Um, he has shared his amazing work with us on MyEmpoweredWorld.com. Go ahead and check it out. It's called Empowering Images by John Watkins, and it's a lifetime worth of work. It's very impressive, so be sure to check that out. Um, how are you doing tonight, John? I'm doing great, Evan. I really appreciate this opportunity to uh, share my passion. Uh, it's, it's fun to express myself whenever I can, and this is awesome. So thanks for having me on. Yeah, we're excited to have you. And uh, just to give all the listeners an overview, overview once again, My Empowered World provides transformational tools for living so that the world has a place for everyone. Um, so be sure to check out our website at myempoweredworld.com. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and also join our daily empowerment emails at myempowerworld.com. Um, let's see, if anyone has any questions tonight, feel free to go ahead and post them on our Facebook wall, and I'll try to answer them, but have John answer the questions before the end of the show tonight. So I'm super excited to have you on the show tonight, John. This means a lot to me. Um, we pretty much know each other for a super long time, and you're someone that I've always looked up to, and you're a mentor and an older brother, and your work has always inspired me and I'm excited to get the chance to share your work and your story with all of our followers. So with that being said, I guess we'll just start off with the first question. What inspired you to become a photographer? Oh, that's a pretty in-depth question, actually, and I thought about that in the last few minutes here, driving home from all day of work. Uh, every day of my life is pretty much passionately inspired, inspired by photography one way or the other, and I thought, about my early origins in, in photography, and it really dates back to uh, when I was a small kid, I mean, like three, four, or five years old, my parents uh, were always kind of into exploring, and we had a we had a trailer uh, in the remote section of Baja, California in the mid-60s, late 60s, early 70s, that had a little dirt runway. My dad was a pilot, still is, and we would fly down to this little location and we were basically the only trailer within three, four miles of another trailer, and beyond that, it was probably 40 miles before the next person. So <laughs> we grew, I grew up in kind of a Robinson Crusoe environment, and I watched many good sunsets and amazing starlit skies in the clearest part of Baja, California, the central area, on the Sea of Cortez. And I think it was the colors of the mountainscapes and all the beautiful colors of the ocean and sea life that really inspired me uh, quite a few years after that to pick up a camera. It was I was right. just enthralled by all the God's nature, and uh, and that 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 got the ball rolling. I years later got into people photography and and kept that ball rolling. But I would say landscape and scenics were my first introduction to photography with a camera from all my memories of. Uh, growing up in Baja, California, not as my prime place to live, but as a vacation home that we frequently uh, flew to. So, uh, beautiful experiences as a kid. Uh huh. Awesome. And so, if you could express, I mean, how would your work, you know, you got started, and then how did it evolve over time? I mean, how would you express, you know, how it, how it evolved? Sure. Uh, how it changed? Well... I didn't know anything about the camera at first. Um, I had a an early, uh, like junior high, high school, I had a, a very good friend that was into photography uh, quite a few years ahead of me, and he was pretty good. And when he spoke to me about it, it was like Chinese or Japanese language. I just didn't make sense of it. And yeah. I picked up a camera, and it was one of those situations where you, I taught myself by doing it so many times. I brought my camera with me. I was heavily involved in traveling the world as a surfer, um, and I took my camera with me everywhere. And um, and I learned. Now, that was back in the film days, so it took quite a bit of money to figure out how to take a picture, but I just kept making mistakes. <laughs> but, yeah, you know, yeah. my, my passion carried me through um, all the mistakes. And um, it evolved. Basically, I learned how to read light, and that took a lot of years to learn how to read light. So 
the better I became at photography, the better I became at reading light and the subtle changes of light. And um, I applied it towards my landscape, and I applied it towards shooting people as well. And I think that, you know, I think, well, who was it? Leonardo, Leonardo da Vinci once said that simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. And I, I honestly believe that that is true. And, I, you know, I, I've learned all these techniques from lighting through different photographers that I've worked with and for over the years. And um, I think as I as I have evolved as a photographer, I've certainly trained myself and um, and received formal training in lighting and technicalities. But I always come around to what looks the simplest and what conveys the message the most efficiently. I, I guess really what hits the heartstrings of people, and and that isn't always an over-technical picture. Sometimes it is, but really, a simple picture, a beautiful, simple picture is, is a hard thing to, to create time and time again, and that's what I'm becoming better at. And I'm learning every year. I've been doing this for 25 years now, and every year I'm, I learn what I really don't know. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Uh, Anyway. Well, you know, tell us about, you've got, you shared some beautiful photography with us, and we've got it showcased on our website now. There's about 39, 40 photographs that you've shared with us. Oh. They're just spectacular, and super excited to share that with everyone. Uh, maybe okay. you can tell us about, yeah, they're just sure. freaking great. Well, maybe you could tell us about how you kind of got into the, the, the nature of photography and, and what sure. inspired you to kind of take that route and really start, you know, progressing that way? Well, I have never been one to to formally meditate. I, I've, I've always thought it was a cool concept. Um, I have a very busy head with a lot of creative thoughts, and I'm constantly going in ten different directions like many artists are doing throughout the day. And mm -hmm. one thing that I know is very healthy to the human spirit, mind, body, is meditation. And I haven't necessarily acquired formal meditation yet or mastered it by any means. And I think my form of meditation is to literally go out in nature and to observe and to... I absolutely am completely convinced that we have a creator, a, a God who loves us, and uh, I am a Christian, and I believe that that is our closest uh, form uh, that we can be with God is in nature. And, and that's my form of meditation. It really is. I, I think it's Psalms 4610, something like that. Part of it says, be still and know that I am God. And literally when I go out and shoot nature, I remind myself of that quite a bit. And as I sit there and just observe and relax and look at what's performing in front of me, I am about as close to God as I can, as I can be. And uh, so I'd say uh, it's my form of meditation. I love it. I think that every day is a different day. Every every lighting situation is a different lighting situation. And um, I don't necessarily make a living from my landscapes at the moment, um, but I treat it as my release. And um, I'm going to continue to do that for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. So Now, I, I, I've I, actually had the – yeah, yeah, go on. Well, I was just going to say that I, uh, you know, I, I've, I'm very grateful that I've had the privilege to learn how to shoot people so well. That's the other side of my business, lifestyle photography, a little bit of fashion, um, quite a bit of portraiture. But to combine the two is, is an awesome thing, to take someone out into an environmental portrait situation and to understand how to shoot a landscape and also understand how to shoot um, a portrait within that landscape is, is a beautiful combination. And so I've been trying to, mm -hmm. you know, as my photography progresses, I ask myself my focus and my direction, and I, and I think it is environmental portraiture where whoever looks at the picture really gets a good feeling out of the whole thing, not just the person, not just the environment, and that it's a combination. So, right. Anyway. Um, well, I know I've had the experience, the, the opportunity to actually go and 
and join you on some of your landscape photography. Um, we, I think it was a few months ago, we actually both went down and shot some photos together down uh, in Laguna. I think it was Crescent Bay. And yep. um, that, that experience was pretty special for me. Just to, you know, I was stoked to be there with you and being able to share the experience, but also just to be in nature and, and feel all that was it was it was super cold and the wind was blowing really hard. Uh, so maybe you can kind of describe your personal experiences while while you're shooting, because I know every single time is different because it could be a really stormy night or a really sunny day. You know, it's always changing. Maybe yeah. you can talk a little bit yeah. more about that. Okay. Well, first of all, I was absolutely excited to have you. I knew that. Uh, first of all, I know how passionate you get about things. And I know how things make you feel good when I know how new experiences make you feel good. I've seen that over the years. And so I thought, you know, Evan would really appreciate this. And yeah. it's one of those things that you live so close to, and I wanted you to, to feel that. And so that particular evening, yes, was very windy and uh, just after a storm. And my... Uh, focus that evening was to try to get the wind. That's actually why I wanted to go, to catch the storm, just the clearing of the storm and the big wind waves and the spray off the waves. And I know that mm -hmm. you left that experience a lot more energetic than when you first showed up. So that was a turn on for me. That was awesome. Yeah, um, I, yeah it, was, it was a neat experience. I drove away with a good feeling in my, in my heart and head thinking that I... Yeah, I had a big old smile. Yeah, it was awesome. I, 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 I think I was in the day I was kind of needed that. It was exactly what I needed, and it felt really good. It was cool. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I think you used the word awesome about 39 times that night, so I know that you had a good time. Yeah. But, <laughs> um, every time's different. It really yeah. is. I, I'd say, um, you know, sir, that was a, that was a cold one. You, you know, you made it through the cold one on that one. Um, there are certain <laughs> evenings that are <laughs> – now, you know, that was an ocean experience, and I've been very, I guess, ocean-biased only because I grew up like you did as a surfer, and I have been introduced to the ocean as, as such a young kid that I have so many good memories of the ocean that I, I feel that energy all the time. When, when Where the ocean and the land meet, to me, is such a powerful, powerful place, and, and so yeah. I pick up on um but I've I've had assignments in the last year where they where a, a gentleman commissioned me to go to the High Sierras to shoot a picture that he wanted on his uh, warehouse wall uh, that he he tends to throw a lot of big parties at and he wanted an inspiring 20 foot high by you know 18 foot high by 20 foot wide photograph uh, plastered on his wall and he commissioned me to go wherever I needed to go to get it so I took off to right. the High Sierras. And I was really inspired by the mountain energy on that trip as well. Did you go? Um, did you go alone, or did you have an assistant or anybody? Or no, on that trip I did have an assistant. It actually turned out to be this gentleman's son um, who wanted he wanted to turn his son on to a to a neat experience, such as how I turned that on to you on the beach. And uh, William Dixon and I went up to the High Sierras, and I shot some film on that trip. I I do have my film camera still in my quiver, my repertoire that I break out from time to time, and this was a medium format film camera that I used that day. And I did that because I knew I was going to have have such a big uh, enlargement that I wanted something huge to start with. So I shot big film, and I high-res scanned it huge, and it turned out awesome. It really did. It, was, it, it, it really uh, solidified m my passion towards landscape photography by a 20 foot <laughs> wide by 18 foot yeah. high picture right in front so um it was a beautiful piece i saw the finished product it was amazing i appreciate that thank you and, and yeah. we had to go through the yeah. process of printing it like the billboards get printed and it, i learned a lot about the printing process during that but but anyway he and i went up there and we had the freedom to do whatever we wanted to and uh it was it was amazing that i was commissioned to do what i love to do and to to make that piece of art. Um, but what I'm saying is that whatever the situation is, you know, if you have a passion behind your motive, uh, you're going to enjoy yourself. And I just thoroughly enjoy myself, really enjoy myself, whether I'm shooting a wave, if I'm shooting a, a mountain scene, 
if I'm shooting a child, if I'm shooting an adult. I just like to bring, I'm kind of a feel-good guy. And that's kind of, you know, I, I, I sort of, I guess I'm a little bit like the Jack Johnson of the art wor- of the photo world. I just kind of throw out feel-good pieces of art because they make me feel so good. And um, I'm not too bent on trying to show people my particular angle or my interesting point of view. I'm more of a, I want someone to get a good feeling out of this piece. Now, that doesn't mean it doesn't, you know, throw a sad feeling at times or um, a a somber feeling, but um, my overall, uh, I'm just really inspired by making a feel-good message. And so... That is something that I'm glad you experienced with me, and every situation is unique, and every day is a different day in photography, just like surfing. <laughs> I agree. So, well, yeah. Well, real quick, we're going to break for a station ID, and we'll be we'll be right back. Very good. Look forward to it. You're listening to Empowering Radio for My Empowered World. Visit us at myempoweredworld.com. Become a subscriber and get daily inspirational messages delivered to your inbox. And we're back with Empowering Radio, brought to you by MyEmpoweredWorld.com. We are here with John Watkins, professional photographer located here in Orange County. And um, let's just go back to, uh, I've got a question that I, I wrote, uh, that I read about your bio. And so that it mentioned that you like to portray positive imagery of your subjects. Um, I really liked that part of your bio that you wrote. Can you elaborate on that a little bit more? I, Thank you. Uh, yeah, uh, I think that the camera is such a powerful tool, such a powerful instrument that can be really taken advantage of. It can be used for good or for bad. And um, you just cannot believe all the different examples I see in life of people using the camera in a, in a, for, their, for their own good, but in a bad way. And I, and I see mm-hmm. just as many people using it in a good way. But... I think with that power comes a responsibility, and you know if you're gonna if you're gonna capture a slice of life, um, I I think it's nice to make it a positive slice of life. Mm-hmm. I years ago I went to Bali in the early 90s on a surf trip, and I brought a camera with me, and I didn't know that it was taboo. I think it probably still is, but back then, anyway, it was taboo to take pictures candidly of the native people. It was like you stole their soul. And I remember one particular situation. I was up in the mountains of Bali, nowhere near the coast, way up in the jungle area. And I was driving by. Um, I wasn't driving at the time. I was with somebody that was driving me, and I was had a lens pointed out the <laughs> passenger window. And I shot a gentleman in front of his house, and he hopped on his motorcycle, and he chased us down for a good five miles. And, we, and I mean, we didn't know where we were going, and we were in a foreign <laughs> land. And the guy is on his motorcycle literally going 50, 60 miles an hour behind us trying to get my, wow. <laughs> my camera or something. We didn't know what – I didn't know what I did wrong. And I was, you know, a big yeah. smile on my face and shot his picture. So he never caught us, but we later <laughs> said that story to – Somebody there, a local, who explained the whole situation that he was out to get my camera because I stole his soul. So, you know, that just shows you the power of the camera, and it shows you the responsibility that you have. And I really think that um, if you, ha- if you're, again, I'm, I'm a Christian, and I believe that we're put here for, for good, for doing good things. To do one of the mm-hmm. strongest rules I have in my life is to do unto others the way I'd like them to do unto me. And um, I think through my years, of, I've had 29 years now, uh, we haven't discussed this, but I've been on the other side of the camera for 29 years as a professional model and that kind of a thing, mixed with being behind the camera for 25 years. So I, I know the power of the camera. I know the responsibility of the camera. I've had people take pictures of me that I wasn't very happy with. And so it's made me very much aware that I have a responsibility to leave this earth a little better than I found it. And I really think that you can certainly do a lot through communicating with images and, and you know, expressing. People have a way of 
being very shy in front of the camera that are that aren't used to being in front of the camera, very timid, and and there's you know it's because it's a very unusual thing pers- to do. It's a personable thing, yeah. It's like you, you're, it's very intimate thing. It's very intimate, and so you don't want to, you know, you you want to make their experience a good experience. And um, one of the hardest things I have as a professional photo- portrait photographer with shooting families and. Um, that kind of a thing. You know, I'm shooting a modeling job for a clothing catalog. Those people are professionals, and that's their job. But when you shoot the public, which I thoroughly enjoy doing, you you as a photographer have a responsibility to to make them have a or to hopefully allow them to have a good experience. And and I think that I I do a good job at that. And it's because I've had so many years in their shoes, standing there, nervous in front of the camera. And, in fact, my very first experience as a young teenager in a surf contest, uh, a gentleman came across me who was one of the top photographers, still is in the the entire world, Bruce Weber, who shoots, back then it was all the Calvin Klein ads, all the Ralph Lauren ads. Nowadays he shoots uh, the the Abercrombie and all that kind of stuff. But he he, uh, felt something about surfers, the energy that surfers had, and so he was shooting a surf contest one day. Anyway, his experience with me, a person that had never had a camera shown in front of his face, um, it was a good one. He made me feel very at ease, and and I laughed, and it was a comfortable environment. I didn't know who this guy was, and he didn't necessarily want to tell me who he was. He turned out to be, I'd say at that time, one of the top two or three photographers in the entire world. So he he had it down, and I learned a lot from that man over the years about, you know, uh, communication with the camera. And um, and the better anybody now can push the button. The cameras are so sophisticated; they're basically computers that fix everything. <laughs> and they, you know, they meter themselves and they correct themselves. So our job as photographers is more of a communication job now more than ever. We really have to communicate with our subjects feedback with our subjects and really offer our subjects an experience that hopefully they'll walk away yeah. enjoying. And and that's that's my goal, and I feel like I've, I've become very good at that. Well, hey, how about you talk to us about the photos in your in your series? Kind of give us um, sure. Sure. kind of talk about some uh, of the photos that that people will um, experience when they're viewing the, the photos that you've um, that you've shared with sure. us. Sure. Uh, I. Things have evolved in that aspect of my photography, too. And I've learned that photography is kind of an experiment. It really is, between light, exposure, and, uh, well, light and exposure. That you know, it, is, it makes things an experiment. So if you allow the slow shutter speed in a, in a landscape situation to take hold where you can purposely drag the shutter speed and allow that shutter to open up for a longer time than you might normally do, you get all kinds of weird things going on that you would you can't really forecast. It sort of happens and you let the magic kind of happen. And I've I've done that with quite a few of my oceanscapes where I've slowed the shutter speed down and I've let the ocean do its thing. And and it's an experiment every time but magic comes around. And and so I, I'd say that's one facet that I've been into, and you've probably seen that on some of the images where you get movement involved with the ocean. And, and I think that's a very powerful thing. It becomes a little more like a painting. It's not so uh, literal. And so a lot of my photography in the last three or four years with landscapes have become less literal and a little more surreal, not so real, a little more dreamscape. And that's and my people photography in that sense has also, but my landscape has become very surreal, and and, and I'm sort of focused on that right now to um, to take photos like a painter would paint the scene, and that's not always perfectly in focus, so I enjoy that. Um, I also enjoy colors, and so you're never sure what colors are going to come around when you take pictures in low light, you know. If you take pictures in strong light, you kind of get what you see, unless you're using filters. If you take pictures in very low light, 
all kinds of things happen magically on the sensor. It used to be on the film, but now on the sensor. And excuse me. There we go. And so again, it's kind of an experiment, and it's a lot of fun. And so that that taps in that surreal aspect that I'm going after. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I think that. Uh, we live near a very pretty area, Laguna Beach, and so I've been able to utilize Laguna Beach a lot. Um, and my my right. goal is to always try to get my own perspective, not one that's covered by every other photographer out there, no matter what i got to do to get it. Um, if i got to hike through water with a tripod and hold the camera above my head, I'll do that. Um, you know, if i got to battle the wind or the rain. I enjoy shooting in clouds, too. I think clouds at it adds another aspect that's uh, a bit of an experiment. So that's fun, too. I love clouds. But um, Well, we're on the last couple minutes here of the show, and maybe you can just sure. share with us um, how, do you, how do you stay focused and empowered, you know, when you're in your day-to-day right. life? Just kind I of a, what keeps I, you... Yeah, I stay busy. I also am very active. I think exercise, <laughs> you know, I tend to run a lot. I, 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 I'll tell you one thing. Throughout my life, I've had challenges, with, as everybody has. And during my challenging times in life, I've resorted to surfing and going in the water. And mm-hmm. um, this last few years have been, has been very challenging in certain regards on my professional life. And so I've just lately realized, hey, John, that's what's pulled you through when you're a kid. That's what's pulled you through when you're in college and your younger adult life. Get back in the water. And it, yeah. it, the ocean very inspiring being in the water it's like powerful. A christmas it's so powerful yeah. it's ridiculous yeah um, exercise is powerful but keeping busy is powerful and also acknowledging other people's work always looking always observing always appreciating other artists work as well daily mm-hmm. and um and then i'd, I'd say know, yeah go ahead well, I've noticed also, you know, with all your your photography, um, your landscape stuff, I've noticed that you've been you've been sharing a lot of inspiring quotes that you put on your photography. That um, there's a few of the photos that we've shared have them, but um, that definitely caught my eye. And I'd like to share some of those over, you know, the next couple months. That stuff that you know you create with uh, quotes, yeah. I'd love to share it with my followers because they they really seem to like that stuff. So. Well, you'd be that's great awesome. Too. I do too. I, yeah. I, I love it. I, I once took a card class. It went for a card seminar, how to make cards. It went for four days straight, like eight hours a day, because I'm so inspired mm-hmm. by. It. I'm like the cheesy guy that reads the magazine in the on the airline <laughs> the inspiration yeah. messages. I love that stuff. I have since I was a little yeah. kid. Yeah. So that inspires me. And my whole theory is, if I'm inspired, it'll rub off. And so whenever I've tried to do a piece of art just for somebody else's inspiration, it doesn't work well for me. It does for some other artists, but for me, i got to let my passion rub off. I don't try to sell it verbally. I'm not the best at that, but I let my actions speak louder than my words, hopefully. And generally, my, my art seems to rub off. Um, it really comes back has, to I think. Yeah. 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 It, it comes back to a saying, you know, that says, whoever is happy will make others happy too. I think Mark Twain said that. Whoever is happy will make others happy too. And that's exactly how I, how I approach my art, whether it's shooting a landscape or shooting a person. If I'm happy in front of that person or if I'm happy out there on the beach or if I'm happy up there in the mountains and I really get passionate about it, basically I bottle sure. that up and put it in my art and it's expressed to the viewer. So um, it really comes down to that. Keep yourself happy, and you'll and it'll rub off on others, and they'll be happy too. Hey, John, that's the end of the show. Thank you so much for everything, and um, we look forward to having you once again. Go ahead and check out John's um, empowering empowering imagery um, on myempoweredworld.com. And we uh, thank thanks a lot for coming on the show, John. Yeah, thanks for having me, Evan. Again, you mentioned it. You're like my little brother, and I'm proud of what you've become. I'm happy you're still into the artist, the imagery that you are. Keep keep powering, my friend, and keep being empowered. And I appreciate you having me on the show. Awesome. All right. Thank you so much. Have a good night, you guys. Right. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. 
You're listening to Empowering Radio from My Empowered World. Like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash myempoweredworld. And remember to share and help us spread our message of empowerment. 